Hey guys, Kokusum for the win here, and welcome back to another Leaf Green walkthrough episode. In this part, we'll be going down Route 6 and make it to Vermilion City. Now, after you're done Route 24 and 26, um, you come... You make sure you heal up before you even continue on. So you heal up and you come down over here to this house, and there'll be a policeman standing here, and that's the reason why is because... Uh, a Team Rocket member just stampled through this house right here, and he's gonna stop you in want a battle. Now, there's nothing really special about this rocket grunt right here, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with this battle. It's gonna be running the norms, Machop, Machop um, Ekans, Zuba, whatever you usually see on a rocket grunt. So we're just gonna go for a peck right here with our Robin. Uh, take out this Machop, uh, Machop pretty dang easily, and we're almost gonna go up to a level, that's nice. So he's actually, he's running a uh, Drowsy. I haven't seen this just yet, that's cool. I haven't seen a Drowsy in general yet in this whole playthrough or walkthrough, so that's that's nice. It's gonna disable us though, do, you do have to watch out for that. I think I'm just gonna go for Pursuit right here. I don't know why I didn't go for this earlier. It is super effective, dark against uh, Psychic, so. But we're gonna go up a level now. Robin's level 24 and almost the same level as uh, our light bulb, only two levels down. Now, once you actually win this battle right here, the Team Rocket Grunt will give you a TM that he stole. He gave you TM28, and instead of you actually giving it back yourself, you're gonna keep it for your your own Pokemon, because you're selfish, pretty much. <laughs> That's what your trainer is. I don't know why, it's kind of like, if you beat a, a villain in real life, and he's like stealing a diamond or something, and you win, he gives you the diamond, wouldn't you like normally give it back? Wouldn't that be the right thing to do? Pokemon's teaching kids the wrong things nowadays. But we're gonna go through this underground path right here, and actually, if you guys have to, I'm gonna go back in this road here. If you guys want to catch a cool, different Pokemon that you haven't seen yet, in this grass right here, you'll be able to catch some Meowths and stuff. Uh, Meowth is a decent Pokemon. Not, it evolves into Persian, and its stats isn't isn't the greatest in the world, but um, it's still a pretty good Pokemon. It could learn some pretty cool move. Has a pretty cool uh, move pool, so. If you want to run like Thunder, Dark Pulse, and a bunch of other random moves on a Pokemon, uh, that's definitely a Pokemon you would like to have on your team. Now we are going to go into Route 6 right here and challenge our first trainer. This is going to be a Bug Catcher. Uh, bug Catchers are so boring at this point. We've versed so many. We just want to get to the to the gym leaders where they have a bunch of Pikachu's, Raichu's, and then I don't know. Uh, Gengar, stuff like that. We don't want to verse these Weedles and Caterpies anymore because we sweep through them with Peck. And it's kind of sad. I don't know why Pokemon actually gave you a bunch of Weedles and stuff at the beginning. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be easier at the start, but come on. We don't want to at least give us some Butterfreeze and stuff like that. Maybe some B drills here and there. Because Weedles and Caterpies are a little too easy now. Level 16, too, at that. We're level 24. We're going to be cutting through these things like butter. So he's gonna bring out his last Pokemon, another Caterpie, of course. Not like Bug Catchers uh, run a strong, other stronger Pokemon. I wish they actually ran like Scizor or Scyther or something. That'd be interesting. Uh, definitely a better challenge than these Caterpies and Weedles. So we're gonna defeat that Bug Catcher, and then our next opponent actually is gonna have a cool Pokemon. This is gonna be a little more of a fun battle. He's actually running a level 20 Squirtle. So. If you chose Ivysaur, you shouldn't have too much trouble. I'm not going to use Ivysaur uh, myself, but definitely, definitely going to be a way better battle. Going to go for a peck here. And, you know what, never mind. He's going to go for a withdraw, so it looks like he doesn't even want to give us a challenge. That's fine. Uh, I think peck might actually not kill here because he did go for a withdraw. But it's going to do not that much damage, dang. So, Squirrel's going to go down quite easily. You shouldn't have too much trouble with the battle. If you have a strong enough Pokemon, it's gonna go through that um, first evolution Pokemon pretty easily. His Squirtle should be evolved into a War Turtle by now, but he decided not to do it. Now we're gonna fight this other Picnicker, Picnicker Nancy, and she's gonna have two Pokemon on her team. She's gonna have a level 16 Rotata and a Pikachu, which is also level 16. So I'm gonna stay in here with Peck and just keep attacking, attacking these Rotatas, Caterpies, etc. Um, I actually might have to switch into my. You know what? We're gonna stay in. We're gonna try this out. I think Fury Attack might be able to take out this Pikachu. Pikachu is a super good electric Pokemon at the start of the game, but if you have any normal, like, stab move that's pretty strong, you shouldn't have too much trouble. We're gonna get uh, hit by that static ability, though, and get paralyzed, which kind of sucks. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though. 
we don't really need our speed because yeah we'll get hit first now but we'll, we'll still like cut through all these Pokemon so our next opponent's gonna be another bug catcher and actually this bug catcher is gonna be a little more fun than the last one he's actually running a Butterfree which I suggested they to do them to do so it looks like they listen to me but nevertheless we're still gonna take this thing out with Peck he will get a attack off though never mind he's gonna miss that supersonic and we're not gonna get paralyzed Butterfree's gonna go down even with the critical hit <laughs> just a rub in his face nice so Robin's gonna go up to level 25 now um, one level away from my ivy sore so that's good Elijah I'm sorry man I'm sorry that I had to do that to your Butterfree I know you listened to me and got a stronger Pokemon on your team but hey can't do anything about it so we're gonna fight this picnicker next and this picnicker actually kind of boring as well we're gonna fight a bunch of Pidgeys like run some Pidgeotas please just level up two more times at least then you'll be uh, at par with my Fearow we're gonna get paralyzed though first time and he's gonna go for another quick attack I don't understand why the AI is like going for quick attack I am paralyzed like you're gonna outspeed me you don't need to have your priority here in this battle so she's gonna have three Pidgeys on her team Level 16, shouldn't be too hard. Just gonna keep going for pecs right here. Uh, might have to spice it up though and bring out my Ivysaur. I don't know for sure though. But, you know what, let's bring out our Ivysaur. I don't wanna get paralyzed any more than we already did. We got paralyzed once, but if it happens again, that'll just kinda be annoying. Getting hit by quick attacks over and over again while getting paralyzed. So, Vine Whoop should be able to take it out in two shots or so, maybe three. Uh, that's not too bad. Ivysaur is still strong Pokemon, so it should be able to tank these quick attacks and tackles that this Pidgey is throwing at us. Uh, you should really teach your Pokemon Gus, J just a tip picnicker. I know you're not that smart because you're AI, but still. So, a picnicker is going to go down and our Ivysaur is going to be able to come up on top. Now, the last Pokemon or Pokemon trainer in this route is going to be a camper. It's a little bit different this time, it's not a picnicker. But this camper has two Pokemon on his team. He has a Spearow and a Raticate, which we actually haven't versed yet. Um, I don't even think our rival has a Raticate just yet, so um, this battle might be a little more interesting. Might have a little bit of trouble with this Raticate. So I'm just gonna stay in here and go for some Vine Whips, take out this Spearow pretty quickly. I don't want to bring out my Pharaoh against these Pokemon because Raticate actually might do some damage to us, so. Light bulb can get some levels up right here and uh, be able to take out these Pokemon pretty easily. So Raticate's gonna come out now. When you're versing Raticate, usually it's gonna be right running Hyper Fang or something. I don't know for sure if this one's running it though. Yes, it is. Okay, but it's gonna miss. Hyper Fang is gonna be doing a lot of damage when uh, Raticate's running it. Gonna go for a quick attack right there. Raticate, I don't know, just looking at this Pokemon, it's kind of cute in a way. It's so chubby and. I kind of want to run one on my team now, <laughs> just because of how fat it is, it's just so cute. But we're going to make it into Vermilion City right here, and I'm actually going to heal up my Pokemon, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, I finally healed up my Pokemon, and I'd like to come over to this house over here, to the left of the Pokemon Center, and if you talk to this man right here, the Fishing Guru, he'll actually give you an old rod which I'm going to catch my next Pokemon with. If you guys want to go ahead and catch some Magikarps and stuff, you could definitely do that. Gyarados is a pretty viable water type to use in this game, so if you want a strong water type, make sure to pick up the old rod. Now, after you do that, come over to this house in the bottom left corner and talk to this man on the couch over here. This is the Pokemon Fan Club house, if you guys wanted to know what it was. And if you listen to the uh, owner of it, and you listen to how much he loves Rapidash, he'll actually give you a pretty useful item, which is the bike voucher. And I do recommend getting this bike voucher because you're able to get a bike now with this thing if you uh, go back to Cerulean City and go back into the bike store. Without it, you won't be able to get a bike because it'll cost one million dollars and it's not even possible to get that much money in this game. So the final house that's actually worth going into is this house over here, uh, next to the Pokemon Fan Club house. And if you talk to this girl, she'll actually trade you a Farfetch for a Spearow if you have one. 
But I'm not gonna do that because I love my Fero and I already evolved him into Fero, so there's no possible way she would even trade me now. But yeah, so anyways, that's pretty much all you can do in Vermillion to do. Uh, I'm gonna end off the episode here. If you guys did enjoy it, go ahead and tell me what you liked in the comment section down below. And uh, also, make sure you give me some criticism. I really appreciate it. So if you guys like this video, shoot that like button with Kamehameha.